Well, I'm fortunate in that I have um, a really diverse group of students, many of whom are already sort of aware of themselves as artists, you know, maybe it's because I teach in New York. And so those who are kind of self-consciously artistic are usually inspired by the fact that creative people can also be very engaged civically and socially. And I think one of the things that I find most extraordinary about teaching is that the students who don't think of themselves as artists also are empowered to find a creative voice um, for expressing themselves and I'm often surprised at what I get from them. So I think I get art in traditional forms, poems and students who are spoken word artists and musicians um, who express themselves in that way comfortably, but also students who aren't aware of their own sort of artistic potential and that engaging the works of great artists sort of inspires that creativity in them too. And so even their papers can be a form of art, very engaging art. While there are certainly influences, and I think especially influences from the 1960s, for instance, because that's the period that everyone associates with a kind of um, political activism on the part of the arts, that the, the arts that I see, young people I see engaging in kind of creative work are both kind of building upon the past, but not wanting to replicate it. They're wanting to speak to their own moment in time. And I think that some of them are so um, overwhelmed in some ways by the commercial possibilities um, that are available to them right now that it's a challenge to really kind of speak their own artistic and creative truth. And that the example of previous generations, people like Nina Simone, who dared to have the integrity to challenge, speak what we call speak truth to power, is a really important example for them about how might one do that today.